So today I want to do a very quick video about Thunderbird. It's a venerable email client that's been around for a really long time, but it has slow and solid improvements in most of their releases. But I really feel like over the last two years, especially, they've really taken some new leaps and bounds, not only with refreshing their user interface bit by bit, but also adding some genuinely useful features. So I thought I'd just take you uh, around a little bit of a tour of what has changed since I last used Thunderbird on the daily. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it takes us. So while some of these features aren't gonna be especially unique to version 102, which is the latest sort of series that is available for downloading. Uh, it will include quite a few features from the 102 release and also earlier. So let's get into it. So first of all, you're gonna notice that uh, this is not the way that Thunderbird looks by default, but I think it looks pretty darn good. And this is uh, due to just a little bit of tinkering that I've done outside of the default setup. What I do wanna point out though, first up, is the fact that check out these nice folder colors. These are default to Thunderbird now, and uh, this is part of the work that's gone into kind of refreshing the user interface and making it look a little nicer. These subtle visual cues, really simple, uh, modern looking icons, great touch. The overall UI of Mozilla Thunderbird hasn't changed too much. Now, as you can tell, I've got it laid out a little differently. By default, it looks something like this where you have the message list on top and then you have the emails down below. I figure with all the widescreen real estate that we have on monitors these days, uh, this sort of view doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and most email clients that I'm aware of usually default to this vertical view now to make better use of that wide space. Um, so that's just me, but, and you can change that very quickly. It's one of the first things I do. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that many of the features that you used to need extensions for now come default in a Thunderbird install. So for example, the calendar used to be a lightning plugin that you would have to go and download from the add-on store. Now, obviously you can still go and get plenty of add-ons uh, for Thunderbird that both add extra functionality to the email client as well as theme it up. Uh, and you can see I've got the larger message list and I've been mucking around with some different themes, but you can appreciate the extra work that's gone into including some of these really popular extensions into the core functionality of Thunderbird. Users of Microsoft Outlook will really appreciate these little side tabs that they've added in version 102 uh, as quick jumps between the address book, the calendar, your to-do list, and, uh, and chat. Now, while we're talking about the address book, they have a new dialogue or a redesigned dialogue for the address book that more suits what modern users want from their email client. If I was to create a new calendar entry, it gives me a much more modern look, very similar to what you would see in an email client like Outlook. Now you might be asking, well, that's all well and good about creating address books, but what if I want to import them? Well, this brings me to another great feature of the 102 series of of Thunderbird. What we have here is a much more robust set of tools for importing and exporting data in and out of Thunderbird. So not only can you import and export data from previous versions of Thunderbird into the email client, but you can import data from a desktop install of Outlook. So if you already have a bunch of emails, contacts, address books, all that stuff in Outlook, you can suck that out of Outlook and suck it into uh, Thunderbird. And you can access that just by jumping into the tools and then going to the import screen. And you can see here that it'll uh, ask you what sort of installation you might be importing from, be that from uh, Thunderbird, SeaMonkey, or another source like Outlook. Continue, continue, confirm, and it will bring all of your stuff in, which is kind of cool. It's also worth mentioning that they've given you a bit more flexibility when it comes to uh, managing the email header. So when you have your email headers here, you can go ahead and customize what you want displayed uh, to give it a little bit more, I don't know, clarity, I guess, or information, depending on what you want. So I think by default, this is very similar to what it looks like, um, but you can bring in the profile picture, you can hide the labels column, and then you can give it a larger subject line just to help glanceability. And also these buttons at the top here have become a lot more prominent, at least since last I looked at uh, Thunderbird. It's also worth mentioning that the, since the last time I used Thunderbird, uh, they've also got the ability to set up open PGP encryption now, which I think is really 
Awesome. One of the main uh, drawbacks, I guess, of using a lot of webmail is that uh, being able to encrypt email end to end can be a bit challenging unless you are using something purpose built like ProtonMail. Um, being able to use that level of service with end-to-end uh, -end encrypted email within a locally installed email client is a huge boost for those that want to be able to have uh, their email privacy secured. And the fact that this is all built in out of the box now and you can import your PGP keys uh, to be able to manage that and it's even uh, prompted in the account setup, it'll ask me whether or not I want to set up end-to-end -end encryption for that particular account. Finally, when it comes to the chat view, you do have uh, the option to enable some matrix style chats now. So any decentralized chat service that you might have going, you can add those details in uh, and loop it in with everything else that you've got going on in Thunderbird. And while this is a feature that has always existed, it's always nice to be able to add some of your uh, online feeds as well. So if you have particular blogs or news feeds that you like to follow, you can have them all delivered into Thunderbird as well. I definitely used to feel like while Thunderbird was a very capable email client with a lot of great features and a wealth of extensions, and extra functionality, it always felt like it was stuck in the early 2000s in terms of its look and its feel. And, uh, and a lot of the user experience was uh, kind of stuck there as well. It's great to see that this is making strides to be more uh, intuitive and more streamlined with the way that it goes about doing things while not sacrificing any of that extra good functionality. Well, that'll be all from me. Just a quick one today. Hope you enjoyed it. When was the last time you checked out Thunderbird? Please note, if you do want to check out version 102 of Thunderbird, you're not going to find it in most repositories. You'll need to go looking, download the actual zip folder from Thunderbird, at least at this point. And this is as of uh, one month after the release of Thunderbird version 102. Otherwise, go check it out, see what you think. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.